The astrological natal chart is a powerful tool for discovering the themes, strengths and weaknesses of any individual. Since ancient history, the movements of the planets have been recognized as a means of understanding the microcosm of the human psyche, and the macrocosm of the human play on the stage of Earth. Simply put, for most of human history astrology has been the prevailing spiritual cornerstone of civilizations the world over. It is only Western Puritanism that has obscured astrology as an old world pseudoscience. Western Biblical Puritanism also makes the claims that the earth is flat, that sex before marriage is a sin, that evolution is a lie, and that the world is 6,000 years old. If contemporary culture was cleansed of its many shortcomings, commercial enterprises, attempts to brand your psyche, or identity markers based on consumptive goods or pop culture, one could see much more clearly that it is the planetary consciousness that dictates one's life decisions, desires, weaknesses, and accomplishments. A person with a Scorpio midheaven is not going to have the same problem with cults or nudity or taboo as a person with a Virgo midheaven. A person with a Taurus moon will be alike to another person with a Taurus moon, but the differences will come from their sun, or other planets. Natal or birth chart is essentially the pattern of the planets in the sky at the time of one's birth. Being that the Earth is revolving around the sun on an axis, and the other planets are in their own orbits, each person's birth chart is different. Each one of these planetary positions imbues the individual with certain character traits, proclivities, energetic likes and dislikes, and struggles. A planetary position can be harmonious, like a Libra Mars with an Aquarius Sun, or disharmonious, like a Capricorn Sun with an Aries Venus. As the planets transit signs, or move through them, the effects are felt on the individual and the whole of everyone alive alike. Each one of these planetary positions imbues the individual with certain character traits, proclivities, energetic likes and dislikes, and struggles. A planetary position can be harmonious, like a Libra Mars with an Aquarius Sun, or disharmonious, like a Capricorn Sun with an Aries Venus. As the planets transit signs, or move through them, the effects are felt on the individual and the whole of everyone alive alike. If the Sun is in Cancer you might get a personality that is passive, a homebody, who likes shiny rocks and mossy beaches. If Mars is in Cancer you might get a jealous, possessive person who is anxious and hems and haws at every uncomfortable change. The generation with Pluto in Cancer, 1914-1938, were salty and family-oriented, the so-called greatest generation. The sign of Cancer rules family and is emotional and receptive, but is also phlegmatic and sardonic. The energy of each of the twelve signs and of each of the nine planets, along with each planet's relationship to another, creates a cat's cradle of influence on the personality of the individual. There are personal planets, the Sun, Moon, Mars, and Venus, and generational planets that affect different sized generations of people, like Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto. On top of the generational planet's influence, there are also 2,000-year cycles of a single sign's age, such as the age of Pisces from 1 to 2001 AD. It's a series of interlocking spirals that bring to life themes of empires and qualities of romance, a civilization's sense of the arts and an individual's sense of self. In the microcosmos of the individual, the sun rules the identity, the moon the emotions, Mercury the mental faculties, Venus the sense of beauty, Mars the masculine, inertiatic energy of doing, Jupiter the luck and philosophical expansion, Neptune the collective dream of a generation, Uranus the changes and surprises that come from a lifetime, and Pluto the generational karma to be unpacked within a generation's time on Earth. The ascendant or rising sign, is the sign that was on the horizon at the time of one's birth, and informs the worldview and appearance of the individual. The Temple of Dendera in ancient Egypt had a zodiac. Hamat Tiberius, a 4th century synagogue displayed a zodiac on its floor. John Pierpont Morgan, the founder of the bank J.P. Morgan, once said that millionaires don't need astrologers, but billionaires do. The banker believed that, to be successful in the market, you need more than just good timing. The Atlas at Rockefeller Center features a zodiac. Astrology has been illegal in the United States because of America's Christian roots. In the early 20th century, astrologer Evangeline Adams was taken to trial for fortune-telling which was a crime at the time. 
Adams was arrested three times in New York City for fortune telling, in 1911, 1914 and 1923. All the cases brought against her were unsuccessful. In May 1914, a trial against her brought particular notability due to the judge's acquittal of all wrongdoing and praise of her skill, after she gave him an astrology reading describing the character of his son from his birth data. Once you find that astrology is observably true, you can see that our society today is no more accurate or close in its cosmology and understanding of the world than previous civilizations that rose and fell. Much of how we observe astrology today has roots in Mesopotamia, see, 3rd millennium BC, and spread to India, but it developed its western form in Greek civilization during the Hellenistic period. Astrology entered Islamic culture as part of the Greek tradition and was returned to European culture through Arabic learning during the Middle Ages. Throughout these times astrology was practiced in imperial courts and in the street. It could be used to predict individual destiny, avert undesirable events, and arrange best-timed moments to launch new enterprises. It could advise on fortunes or the personal details of one person's soul. Because of its origins, our understanding of astrology is often called Babylonian astrology. When you awaken to the fact that the planets dictate a lot of a person's fate, behaviors, and likes and dislikes, you begin to awaken your planetary consciousness. If you see yourself according to your chart you begin to see your motivations, attitudes, and dogmatic beliefs very differently, and this awakening of the planetary consciousness leads to development of deeper aspects of the soul. Horoscopic or predictive astrology is not necessary to have an awakening of the planetary consciousness, simply understanding the personality aspects of your and Antha's natal chart will take you there. Your planetary consciousness has affected you your whole life whether you know it or not. Astrology is an extremely powerful tool that can show you the multitudes of qualities inscribed on your existence by the stars.